Hey everybody, it's Party Elite with a beginner's guide to Total War Warhammer. In this video, we're going to look at infantry layers. While I'm using a very small engagement for the purpose of this tutorial, the theory behind these layers works at larger scales as well. Keep in mind, if you're planning on approaching with a completely different strategy like a pincer or a feigned retreat into an ambush, your motions will be different and your starting layout may be too. This just covers a very simple starting formation and technique. Step 1 is to consider the enemy's frontline width. I want my infantry to at least match that in width. And when I say that, I mean in terms of dimensions, not in terms of number of units. So let's imagine it'll take me two units to match it, and I've only got two units. The infantry in that scenario will form just the one layer. Now in front of them, I place my ranged units. This is for all field battles. There's no reason your archers need to start behind your infantry lines, unless the enemy has vanguard units, but even then, you should have enough time to react and pull your range units back. Finally, I get my lord and I put him back here so that he can move where needed and support as needed. Now, let's assume for the sake of this example, the enemy front line is only one unit wide. In that case, I match the width and set my remainder unit as a reserve. Then I put my range units up ahead again, just for that extra range that they get at first, and finally my lord ends up in front of my front lines. Again, the thought is my range units being up front have extra range to start with. That way I get to pepper the enemy as they come in, and when they're close enough, I would move my range units to safety. My front line would engage, and then my reserve would either flank or support the main line. So let's take a look at the situation that I'm in. Uh, the enemy has an infantry line that spans too wide. So I do the same, and I set my archers in front and my lord in the back. Uh, I do turn off fire at will, and I'll tell you why in just a little bit, and I also turn on guard mode to make sure that people aren't running around without orders to do so. Now on this battlefield, I move up just a little bit to be at the crest of the hill. Uh, being here gives my range units maximum range and also gives my uh, melee units a height advantage as well. Uh, again, you have to use terrain to your advantage, that's why I sit in front, uh, right at the crest of the hill. Now when the enemy gets close enough, I want to focus fire. If fire at will was on, uh, I could potentially waste a volley on the wrong target. That's ammo and time wasted. Now you can see, with focus fire, this one unit of spears actually drains pretty quickly. I want to do this so that they're ready to rout before we even engage in melee, as opposed to spreading my fire. Now they're close enough, so I've started pulling my archers back, and I prepare to counter charge. First I throw down a buff, and there we go, there's the counter charge. Now if the enemy had reserve units, what I'd do is I'd get my archers to fire at them from where they were before, but since he doesn't, he just has that one unit of archers, I maneuver the archers of mine on the weak side of the field uh, out to take care of his archers, and meanwhile, the archers I have on the strong side, that is to say, where the enemy is stronger, I maneuver them to shoot arrows into the back of my enemy. I can't fire into my own units' back as it counts as obstructed, so I have to make this maneuver instead. When the enemy routes, especially in a campaign where the numbers are persistent, it's a good idea to give chase. Here, I just pepper them with arrows to thin their numbers out. Ideally, you might have some cavalry left to do that with. Laying your initial formation out is very important. I'll be covering larger armies in the near future, what to do with cavalry and artillery, etc. But the core of your army needs a strong layout as well. You need to be aware of how you want the battle to flow, and you need to be prepared for things to go sideways. And that's what being a great general is about. For more tips and tricks, subscribe to this channel, and if there's something you'd like to see covered, let me know in the comments below.